All right, going to do a video showing how this Calvinist heresy, this Gnostic heresy of God being the cause and author of sin, is a complete attack on the nature and character of God. That's what it comes down to. Because in Calvinism, they essentially believe that God is the author and cause of sin. So, essentially, in their own theology, if we're going to, if we're going to be consistent with their theology, uh, if God's the author and cause of all, if all sin is God's plan, that essentially means, you know, homosexuality, abortion, uh, pornography, prostitution, hey, even pedophilia. Is basically the will of God. So, when when homosexuality was legalizing here in Canada, that was God's will. When abortion, when a, when a child is aborted, it was God's will. When I mean, heck, when when, when a Catholic priest rapes one of these altar boys, it was God's will. You know, essentially, in their own theology, if we're going to be consistent, uh, and by the way, they, the, James White himself openly said that the if a child is raped, it was you know it was not a meaningless act. You know, and he said, essentially was saying it was God's will. I mean, you can listen to it for for yourself. Here's the clip. When a child is raped, is God responsible and did he decree that rape? If he didn't, then that rape is a, a, an element of meaningless evil that has no purpose. What I'm trying to point out by going to Scripture... So what is your answer there? Because I, I want to understand the answer I'm, to that I'm question. I'm trying to go to Scripture to answer. The, yes, but the what reason, is the answer to the question that the, he just asked so easy, that we can understand what the answer is? I, I, I mentioned to him, yes, because if not, then it's meaningless and purposeless. And though God knew it was going to happen... He created without a purpose. That is Calvinism right there. The, their theology will have them believe that when a child is raped, it was basically God who did it. That's what it comes down to. But this is totally against the character of God. Calvinism, uh, which is full-on Gnosticism, is a complete attack on the character and nature of God. Okay, what say the scriptures? Well, first of all, Jesus Christ is not the minister of sin. Galatians 2.17 but if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. But you see, John Calvin would say, oh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, you see, Paul, you're wrong, because after all, everything is preordained by God. And they'll take Ephesians 1, 11 out of context, of course. Uh, but Christ is not the minister of sin. Okay, It's actually the works of the devil that are sin. Sin is the works of the devil. And Christ was manifest to actually destroy the works of the devil. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay, He destroys the works of the devil which is sin, okay? You, again, compare it to Galatians 2.17, is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid, okay? And more proof of this is the fact that the script, and basically that contradicts this Gnosticism uh, of Calvinism, this Gnostic heresy that God causes sin, is the fact that the scriptures clearly show that God actually hates sin. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 8, for I, the Lord, love judgment, I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Uh, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no false oath, for all, the, for all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. Hebrews 1, 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Uh, Psalms 45 or 7, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Again, he hates uh, iniquity, hates wickedness. Psalms 5, verse 4 to 5, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. Uh, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Meaning, meaning he hates it. He doesn't ordain or cause it to happen. Why is God, if sin is God's will, you know, getting ahead of myself, but if sin is the cause and will of God, uh, then he's basically hating his own will. Psalms 11, verse 5 to 7, The Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked, and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Uh, upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the, the upright. You know, but again, you know, if uh, sin is the cause and will of God, then he's basically hating his own cause. He's hating his own will and hating the results of his own will too. 
Uh, also, the scriptures clearly show that God is grieved and angered by sin. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I, that I have made them. You know, uh, Genesis chapter uh, 18. Also, this what this goes to show too, by the way, as well, is that it was not God's plan for man to sin. God did not want them to sin. God did not want Adam and Eve to sin. Okay, it was the devil who tempted them. But Calvinism literally says that God actually forced and preordained Adam and Eve to sin. Calvinism is a total attack on God's nature. Genesis, Genesis chapter 18, verse 20 down to verse 21. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done they have done altogether according to the cry of it which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. And also Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 9. Also, uh, you know, again, uh, forgot to mention, this is not in my notes, but this verse also shows that, for example, homosexuality was not God's plan because the sin of Sodom, one of them was homosexuality. And he says the sin is very grievous. But also Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 9. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they shall be carried captives, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which hath departed from me, and with their eyes, which go a whoring after their idols, and they shall loathe themselves, for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. This verse is interesting too because he's broken by the whorish heart, he's grieved by the sin, but notice that they loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. See, they have no one to blame but themselves for their sin. They did the sin by their own choice and they have to loathe themselves over it. But if Calvinists, if we're going to be consistent with Calvinism, they should basically just be blaming God, loathing God and, you know, grieving at God for making them sin. But no. They loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed. They they are responsible for their own actions. They have no one to blame but themselves. And God is broken with their whorish heart, meaning he would, he didn't want them to act that way. He didn't want them to sin. It was not his will and you know plan for them to sin like that. Plain and simple. Calvinism is a total attack on the nature and character of God. Calvinism, which is again is just full on Gnosticism, makes God into a sinner and worker of iniquity. Because if you're thinking that God causes and ordains and even creates sin then God is a sinner, plain and simple. You can try to deny it all you want, but if we're consistent, God is a sinner in work of iniquity in Calvinism. And sin is the will of God. Incest, you know, uh, bestiality, necrophilia, pedophilia, homosexuality, abortion. I mean, it's God's plan in Calvinistic theology because sin is the will of God, which shows that the God of Calvinism is not the God of the Bible. The God of Calvinism is a false God. It's the same false God of the Muslims, the same false God of the Gnostics, of Gnosticism and the same false god that was, you know, believed by Augustine, who is the spiritual father of Islam and Calvinism, who got his heresy from Gnosticism. So anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.